Welcome back. Our parent panel continues with Greg Bear and Muffy Mendoza. And before the break, we shared our own experiences discussing loss and death with our kids. And now we're here to answer your parenting questions. We had a couple sent in that we, we thought would be really good for today to discuss. So we're going to get into our first one. Uh, this is from Carla McQuaid, and she said, I'm sending my son to preschool. He's very attached to me. He follows me everywhere. I'm very concerned with how he will do and how I will do, too. <laughs> um, this one, I, I remember putting Lila on the bus and there were tears. Oh. I think there was, a, I mean, I, I will say it looked like a panic attack to me in every true sense of the word. And she's five years old getting on a big bus that she's never been on before. You can feel that, but how do you deal with those big feelings for your kid and for yourself? I would say for me, I had to rep, because I was a homeschool mom. Oh. <laughs> and I was also a stay at home mom with my kids. So it took me a very long time to let go. And I remember sending them to summer camp while I was homeschooling and I would be crying like, I just don't want them to leave. Yeah. But I had to recognize this ain't about you, mom. Yeah. This is about <laughs> them. Right. They're going to spend the rest of their lives detaching from you. Yeah. So how do you want to set the example today? Like, Okay, it's okay if there's tears the first time, but maybe the second time you need to kind of reel it in because you got to let them know that it's okay. Right. I feel like that's the most important thing is letting, sending them the signal that it's okay and that I'm coming back. Like I'm not leaving forever, you're not leaving together. We are reuniting at three o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we will continue to get on each other's nerves from there. Right. So. We'll Love pick that. it right back up. <laughs> right. Well, and here's a helpful tip we received. Um, if in advance of the start of the school year, you can connect with the bus driver or connect with the teacher and just talk to that person about the thing that lights up your kid. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe it's a bunny rabbit, maybe it's a car, and then if that adult can create that connection with the kid, it just eases that moment on that first day yeah. or the first couple of days. Right, oh, I love that. Uh, Pam Canavy's asking something um, on behalf of her 13-year-old, but also this applies to my six-year-old too. Uh, how can I stay connected to my teenage son when he really just thinks I'm annoying? I, and I think this goes to your point, Muffy, about that detachment. Right. And we know, I mean, there's been plenty of studies that we, we know that this starts to happen normally and naturally. It's, an, it's a normal part of growing up that they find us annoying so they can start to detach a little bit. Right. And again, I think this is more about mom and dad <laughs> than it is about them. Like, you got to recognize that you're transitioning into a different mode of parenting. Yeah. And by the time this kid gets to college, like, you're going to be lucky if they call you once a week. <laughs> so you've got to get yourself to the point where you understand that how you parent your child at different ages has to change. And so you're eventually going to just be more like a, a coach. Like they're going to call you when they have a problem and then they're not, they may or may not call you again. Yeah. So at 13, it's like you've got to create a space in your heart and in your mind where you know your child loves you, but you understand that right now maybe they don't need that version of you that they needed when they were five. Right. Mm -hmm. I've got a 13 year old and we went to go see Inside Out 2 this summer. Ooh, I feel so like they so hit it on their head. Keeps talking about so it. Good. You have to. We got you ennui to. and embarrassment and anxiety. I, I you know, look, I, look, I'm struggling with this now. Yeah. And I think it's just important to find that connection. Yeah. Really to, to understand what lights up your child. It's not unlike that preschooler, mm -hmm. but in this case, it's you and that child and starting to love your child for who they are and who they're becoming, not who you want them to be. Right. I, I think it's hard, but we have to remember that we were all that age once. We all had these same feelings about our parents, and I think you just have to lean into it. The article that I read was about uh, the, the parents' white sneakers, the, and the kid hates these sneakers. Oh, why do you have to wear those? You don't get rid of the sneakers. You're still you. You're allowed to be you. And you just kind of say, like, yeah, this I is love it. these sneakers. Yeah. I'm going to be your dorky mom. Yeah. Get used to it. <laughs> Forever. You know? I'm not going anywhere. Thank you both for coming thank on. Thank and we want to thank you at home, too, for sending in your questions. Really great stuff. Remind you, as always, if you're interested in purchasing Greg's book, When You Wonder You're Learning, or checking out Muffy's organization called Brown Mamas, we will have all of this information on our website, kdka.com slash